Sure, so my name is Michelle Campos. I'm a professor at the University of Florida in the United States, and I'm a historian of the modern Middle East. And my current book project is uh, dealing with Jerusalem in the 19th century, writing a social history of the city uh, with a particular focus on looking at mixed neighborhoods and the 40, 50 year process of unmixing and separation that took place in that city. So I don't have a direct personal connection uh, to the study of the Middle East. I started you know, taking classes in college and it became something that I was interested in. Um, didn't want to go to law school like all of my peers in college, after college. And so I had an undergraduate advisor um, who recommended that I delve deeper and, and pursue graduate school. Um, so before I did that, I went to Jerusalem for a year uh, to continue studying Hebrew and start studying Arabic. Uh, and quickly noticed that things were, you know, the rally on the ground was very different than what the history books and what the popular perceptions were in the United States. So it was, for me, just raised a series of questions. Um, and at every step of the way, I made decisions that seemed right at that moment, but I never had the intention of spending my career in this region. So in this current research project, I mean, it really evolved as a way of answering some unanswered questions from my first book. Um, that, uh, that book was dealing with the 1908 Ottoman Revolution and this political culture on the ground uh, there, uh, particularly the commitment of Muslims, Christians, and Jews to the Ottoman Empire and this imperial patriotism. So after that, I was struck by the fact that within a very few years after the end of the Ottoman Empire, you have riots in Jerusalem and bloodshed that continues for basically until today in various ways. And so the, the paradox for me was how do you go from this moment of euphoria and sort of messianic hope and shared political and social relations to disaster? So it indicated to me that we were, we as you know historical community uh, of Ottomanists, the people who work on Israel-Palestine, were missing some things. So as I went uh, back to the primary sources and tried to understand and really excavate uh, more of the urban history. The very complicated um, urban landscape. And so I'm looking at the Ottoman census and literally mapping uh, residents in the city. And I found that even in the most mixed neighborhoods, which for us might indicate cosmopolitanism, very kind of unproblematic, um, you know, intercommunal relations, um, yeah, I was able to find other patterns that challenged or contradicted these ideas and suggested that in fact, just because you have the presence of many groups uh, of religious, ethnic, class groups does not necessarily uh, suggest that they have, you know, harmonious relations by any means. And so, um, you know, this is really a revision of the revisionist historiography uh, that was interesting to me. Well, I think one of the one of the sort of abiding uh, interests that I have is trying to perhaps make a space, an intellectual space, for possibilities for solving the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in the future. I mean, obviously not directly, but indirectly. And one of the things that um, I'm hoping through this book project is that people will see that um, there were, there are and were other possibilities for coexistence on the micro scale within neighborhoods, uh, within cities, um, and so that that might present a path forward uh, rather than having, you know, people on either side issuing exclusive claims to the city or to the country. There are a number of uh, really interesting works by architects and urban historians uh, that have tried to sort of project a utopian shared city model. Uh, and what's interesting is that you don't actually have to imagine it because there was not utopian, certainly problematic in the past, uh, but nonetheless a much better, much more workable uh, system of a shared city. And, and so I hope that this will provide some sort of optimism. You know, I think in our field we tend to be overcome by pessimism as the region gets, you know, looks worse and worse every day or every year. Um, but there were certainly uh, different models and different uh, paths that we could consider taking in the future. Um, so back then, one of the things that's so interesting is that uh, they did have relations and they had sort of very complex relations and uh, relations in very different levels. So relations as neighbors who would have, you know, who would visit each other, who would play, you know, condolence calls, who would celebrate with each other, uh, who would look after each other's children or houses. Um, 
or market stalls, things like that. Uh, you would have business partnerships. Um, this is something that I was surprised with my first project to discover these kind of social networks um, and really lasting ties that individuals had that crossed religious boundaries. Um, so people would be guarantors for bank loans of people in different communities, which is, you know, that indicates a certain degree of familiarity, of trust, a long-standing relationship to each other. Um, so there was a certain depth to Muslim Jewish relations in the Ottoman period because of their proximity, because of their daily contact um, on the streets, in the markets, on the city council. I wrote about that in my first project. Um, in many different ways that you don't have now in Jerusalem, for sure. Uh, it's very much a divided city. Uh, it still bears the scars of the 20-something years of, of physical division and still continues um, as a very much a, a, a divided city, a city with many problems and many suspicions about either side.